Hi, everyone. Dr. Ocker here, Rosalie Ocker. I am glad to be back after two weeks. I just started recording this. So I'm happy for those that could join us tonight. And hello to those of you that will listen to this um, session as a recording. So he, how, how's everybody? We have a beautiful day here today in Pennsylvania, in central Pennsylvania, after a rainy weekend. And it was just a perfect day. Chilling. What's that mean? Good. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Great. So here's what I want to do tonight. I want to review uh, what we just finished, uh, IT portfolio management, and then look ahead to what's coming up next week, which is um, ERP systems and supply chain management. So I will, and I will work to tie the topics together. So we started off with strategy. Organizations have a strategy. And did we talk about the A word? Welcome back, Amran. Did we talk about the A word? Anybody? What's the relationship to between information technology and no A words here. Information technology and corporate strategy. Let's see. Hello, anybody there? Administration? No. Somebody else want to take? Uh, let's see. The second letter is L. There it is, alignment. So the idea is that the technology, a firm's technology, must support its what? Type it in, come on. Must support its what? Week one starts with an S. I know you guys can type. No, close, the week before structure. Really? Strategy, corporate strategy. So a company has a strategy. It's strategic direction. And everybody in the company should be aligned behind that strategy or with that strategy. And so information technology is no different. In fact, it's very important. Today, companies usually cannot achieve their strategic objectives without what? Information technology, right? So it's very important that information technology supports the strategy. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, as you saw in uh, the Volkswagen case, right? Volkswagen has strategies. Everybody has to decide how they're going to spend their dollars in on um, their information technology, but it's got to support their strategies. What was one of the top strategies or the goals that Volkswagen had? Prioritization of funding through meeting. What was one of the goals? Customer satisfaction, customer loyalty. It had identified, Volkswagen had identified its top goals and then the technology, it chose the technology projects that what? Were aligned with those goals, right? 
So if your project, your pet project, wasn't supporting one of those goals, then it shouldn't have been funded. Right? So you'll hear this word sometimes called the rationalization of decision making. Decision, decision making should be a rational process. You should be able to defend the decisions that you make. Everything should follow behind the strategic direction and the goals of the organization. Everything done should support those to move the organization forward to meet those goals. And technology certainly is no different. In fact, it plays a big role. So, that's the concept behind strategy and technology. Of course, organizations have different structures. We talked about those, right? Um, using different structures to achieve different, um, you know, different structures have different pluses and minuses associated with them. One structure is the functional structure. It's good at efficiencies, it's not so good at adapting to change. Right. So then we move past structure to the IT portfolio. Right. So just like an investment portfolio, companies consider the projects within their IT portfolio. And what are the two what are the two axes that must be, um, let's see. Okay, so what are the risks associated with an IT project? Anybody? Give me one. Delays, people, people, people are always risky, Eva. Anybody else? How about? Costs, risk involved in effect, not achieving the goals. All right. So people, there's the people piece, end user acceptance, strategic misalignment, which is just the opposite of what we, it's not easy to get everything, to get everything and everybody supporting the strategic goals and objectives of a company and then have everything work together in alignment right? Cost overruns, delays. And I'll run back to some of those other slides, but what, here's, here's the question. What are the dimensions of the IT portfolio? So you have two uh, axes. What's one of them? Risk. Yes. What's the other one? Value. Perfect. Whoops. So here we go. Risk and value. Where does a company want to have most of its projects? Low risk, high value. Right. Low risk. High value. Oh, and look, a funding priority. Low risk projects that bring high value to the business. We want to fund those, right? What don't we want to fund? High risk, low value. High risk, low value. Do not fund. Why would we want to fund something that's very risky and it's not going to bring us value? We don't. So fund selectively, high risk with the possibility of high value 
Well, there could be some, there could be some projects in there that are high, they're pretty risky, but we could really hit a home run. So we fund those selectively. They're difficult. Maybe it uses a new technology that, that no one's familiar with, right? So it's risky, but we could be the leader if we did project X. So we might do a couple of those. Low risk, low value. Well, sometimes we just have to fund some of these. Sometimes these projects are necessary to keep the lights on. Well, I guess that would be not low value, but I don't know. I can't think of a real example, but something falls in here and we just have to do it, right? All right, so you get the idea so that from a portfolio, you want most of your projects here. Good luck with that, you know. You know everybody would want that. You don't want any of your projects here. Uh, you want to be careful, but, you know, everyone likes to hit a grand slam. So you might want some projects here, but be careful down here too. Understood? So, Let's see what we missed now. Okay, so here's the question. Do you understand the relationship between corporate strategy and IT investments? What's the A word? That's right, alignment. So the IT investments, want, you want those to support the corporate strategy, right? Alignment, alignment, alignment. It's not easy to do, but when you have a process, a rational process like Volkswagen adopted, then you tie your funding, the projects that you're going to fund for the upcoming year or two years or three years to specific, you identify and make sure that they support specific corporate goals, right? And that's what Volkswagen did. They weren't doing it before. Everybody got something funded that they wanted. It didn't matter. It, if it supported the corporate business, it could have been just a new technology that Rosalie wanted. Yeah. So, because I only asked for a couple of things, I got something that I wanted. That is not a rational process. Right? So Volkswagen is a great example of moving from an irrational process to a rational portfolio process, looking at all of the information technology uh, resources and purchases and wants and desires and making sure tying those back to the corporate goals. Now, what happened with that? What was the one, what was the one project in Volkswagen of America? What was the one project? Yes, the supply flow one, thank you. Can you guys hear the dogs barking outside? I have my windows open. Is that bothering anybody? Can you hear that? No, okay, awesome. Okay, great, because I have these neighbors that they have like three dogs and they bark all the time. All right, back to business here. Uh, supply flow, so who should fund the supply flow project? Who is that? Who is going to benefit from the supply flow project? Come on. What shareholder? Who is going to benefit from the supply flow project? Ah. 
the benefiters were from Volkswagen back in Germany, right? The departments that get their projects paid for. Well, I think headquarters, right? Not Volkswagen of America. Correct. Thank you. Not Volkswagen of, of America. So why should Volkswagen of America pay for that? Can you think of any reason? Any good reason? No. So who do you think ended up paying for that? Corporate. Germany paid for it, not Volkswagen of America, right? So that's that's that was the right thing to do and that's exactly what happened. All right. So do you get the idea? Are you pretty comfortable with, let's see. I am not really going to ask you questions to describe the stages of the IT portfolio management maturity model. I'm not going to ask that on a test. What I want you to understand is that um, when a company adopts a new endeavor, in this case, moving to IT portfolio management, ITPM, for those in the know, uh, it goes through a, f a series of stages. And as it develops and embarks on this new way to um, fund projects, it goes through stages. And, you know, with each stage, it becomes more mature. That's what I really want you to know. So you don't start off, um, you don't start off with the end product. You work your way to get there. And very few uh, companies are at the top stage, the highest stage. Okay, risks, we talked about those, delays, cost overruns. We talked about this. This is important that you understand. You get a variety of projects, but you want to balance the portfolio. You want a lot here. And by balancing, you're going to balance risk and value. Up here, you have to be careful. You want a lot of these. You have to be careful up here. You want to avoid these and some... Sometimes you have to do some of those. Top 10 benefits, improve, oh, look, there's that A word, improved business strategy alignment, more control, right? Improved decision making. Questions? Implementation hurdles, okay. It's not easy to put in place, but you got a great example when you read the Harvard case on Volkswagen of America. Um, I think we've touched on the major ones, on the ones I feel are really important. Questions on ITPM? Can I go on? I can, right? Yes, thank you, Jessica. So let's just go to here. I hope you like orange. Now, coming up in module four, module four looks at, oh my God, these dogs are driving me crazy. Hold on. Module four looks at enterprise resource planning, ERP systems and supply chain. And you guys familiar with ERP systems? 
anybody know who's the biggest maker or the most popular ERP system out there? Anybody have any idea? Maybe you've heard of it. I think the dogs are killing each other now. Okay. How about this? Ever heard of SAP? SAP is the leading, one of the leading manufacturers of ERP systems. And the whole idea, now ERP systems have been around for quite some time. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't understand what they do because everybody has them and I want you to be aware of what an ERP system does and how then um, supply chain fits in. So that's, I want you to do the readings for week four, but I'm gonna introduce uh, these two topics. And what I want you, okay, let's look at this figure. So, in a company, a company has front office functions and back office functions. Front office functions are outward facing. So customer oriented, sales, think of, um, I don't know, think of Volkswagen. You know, you're selling cars to yeah. the public. Here you're servicing your product. You know, in the case of Volkswagen, they have a lot of servicing to do about what's the scandal associated with Volkswagen right now? You're familiar with this, right? Anybody? $64,000 question. Emissions. Right, Walter. Emissions. And what did they do? They ch 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 cheated. That's right. <laughs> they cheated. They cheated brilliantly. And how did they cheat brilliantly? What did they manipulate? Computer software, code, the code. Um, they bypassed some of the code, the emissions code. So anyway, it's a big scandal. It's going to cost them a lot of money. And just so you know, I drive a Volkswagen. I have a, a little um, Beetle, Beetle, Turbo Beetle. And I love it. And it's not diesel. So anyway. Uh, okay, so, so I digress. There are front office functions, right? Sales and service thing in Volkswagen. And there are back office functions. These are not customer facing. Everyone needs human resources. You need to be hired, fired, paid, all that stuff paid here. These people make sure that money is invested and accounting usually falls under finance as well. So you get paid. Oh, somebody's got to make the cars. So we have manufacturing and we need to get the parts and the supplies that we need to make, to manufacture what it is we're gonna sell and service. So we have a supply chain and we have lots of data and that sits between the front, the front and the back office. And tying it all together is the ERP system. So in the old days, what replaced the, ER, the ERP system? Was there a central system here that tied everything together? And there's a two letter answer and it is somebody. No, that's right. There was no centralized system. There was nothing tying these systems together. So each of these silos, functional silos, does that sound familiar? Each of these functions had its own systems to support it. And there was no system tying all these siloed functions together. So it was a mess. 
everybody had their own databases, information data was uh, stored multiple places, the same data, there was lots of errors. Uh, it was a mess. So along comes a couple companies and they say, ha, huh, we will make software that does the standard things like it does payroll, it does um, billing, right? It does, it has all the human resources functions in it. Uh, it, it manages supply chain, right? We will create a, an integrated system. These were not integrated, they were standalone. We will create an, a system that integrates all of these basic functions into one system. Good idea? That's a question. Yes or no? Good idea? Yes. Great idea. Difficult to do? What do you think? Yes, difficult, especially at the beginning. It was a big system. An ERP system is a big system. And of course, there were lots of bugs, right? Lots of bugs and it was very complicated and, and you'll read about, um, you'll read about you know, how complicated it is. It's a lot easier now. Why is it easier now? Well, 20 years later, people are a lot better at it. And uh, things have become more simple, simplified. It's, it's not that it's not complicated, but people have expertise now. So now an ERP system isn't nothing, isn't anything, excuse me, isn't anything new, but that's the idea behind an ERP system is that it integrates what were separate systems into one system so that there's uh, the only redundancy in, in the data is what's planned for, uh, what's replicated on purpose. Okay, thanks. Yes, it is streamlined. It is streamlined. So drawbacks, there are some. It's expensive. It's difficult to implement. You need expertise. SAP is one of the leading SAP and Oracle are probably the leaders. Uh, SAP is from Germany. Gosh, another German company. Systems, applications, and products. So you'll hear that SAP a lot. Um, okay, so now, all right, let's go back to this drawing. Come on. Here we go. Okay, now. So how can I create a system, an ERP system that applies to lots of companies? Don't companies have different manufacturing processes? Don't they handle their sales and service differently? How about human resources? Well, the key here is that some of those, a lot of those processes are generic across companies. So I process payroll the same way, you know, the government regulations, gap accounting procedures, that applies to everybody. So there are commonalities across these different functions ac across companies. And sometimes there'll be SAP systems for healthcare industry. And so they'll be specialized for a, an industry or a segment. And so there'll be, you know, all the hospitals can use a similar SAP or, hmm, sorry, a similar ERP system because a hospital is a hospital and it has to order certain supplies and, and it does business a certain way. So there are 
different versions of an ERP system depending on the industry. But within an industry, many of these business processes and business processes and business process is a way that work gets done. Uh, it's a set of activities used to accomplish a piece of work. Um, and we'll talk about business processes soon, soon. All right, so business processes uh, are established within the technologies, the, within the technology, and companies will do some of these things the same way. Do you understand? So there are some things that are the same, but some companies like to do things differently. Well, those are some failures. Uh, and Okay. The key reasons for pursuing the implementation of an ERP system is a desire to standardize and improve business processes. So maybe I don't, maybe my company isn't really efficient and I want to be more efficient. Maybe my business processes are kind of screwy. Um, name, um, let's see, so a, a business process for student, for students, a business process, uh, since our business is um, getting your degree, one of the key processes is registering for classes. There is a sequence of steps that you have to follow in order to register for classes. That's a business process. There's a sequence of steps that you must follow to pay for your uh, education to pay your tuition bill. That's a process. It's a business process. So business processes uh, are how, is how work gets accomplished within an organization. Right. So when a company wants to implement an ERP system, and ERP systems are complicated, and the whole idea with an, with an ERP system is that it's already integrated, so you don't want to muck around in the code too much. You don't want to customize too much because then you're giving away some of the benefits that you've paid for. So what companies do is change some of their own business processes to fit those that are instantiated into the ERP system. Do you understand that? So when I, when my company purchases an ERP system and I want to implement it with as little customization as possible, I don't want to muck around in the code because it's complicated and I could break it. I could break the system and I don't, you know, I want to break the system. I spent a lot of money to buy it because it's all integrated. So what I do within my company is I change some of my processes so that it fits with the way those processes are replicated in the software. That goes over like a ton of bricks sometimes, I can tell you, because people don't like what? What's that word? People don't like change. That's right. People don't like change. Hard to believe, right? I've been doing this job for 20 years. I sit at this desk. People come to me. You know, they ask me those questions. I feel important. Uh, I get to see the people. I, I, you know, I have established these relationships. And lo and behold, you're going to implement a piece of software and it changes the way I have to do my job. Lauren, do you have some experience with this? <laughs> Every day. In what way? Talk to us. You have a microphone. I see that.
I can't hear you if you're talking. Well, if you get your mic fixed, uh, feel free to talk to us, but it seems like Lauren has some experience here. Yes, it's terrible. People don't like to change. And for a piece of software, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult. There's a lot of people skills that you need uh, when you're doing uh, software, when you're changing the way people work. Implementing a system means you're changing things. And that goes over, like I said, like a ton of bricks. Uh, so implementing a big system with a, which will require a lot of changes is just a big deal. So you can, um, so some companies take a best of breed approach. And there are, okay, so here it is. Some companies take a best of breed approach and they will take pieces of different ERP systems and cobble them together. Maybe maybe the Oracle software fits their manufacturing processes better. Or may, and maybe the SAP fits their human resources and front, front office functions better. And say, I'm just making this up. And so they will take those two systems and they will, what's the I word? What will they do? They will integrate them. And so they will or they will take a piece of it and customize it. Right? So there's a couple of different ways you can implement an ERP system. You can go for broke and just implement the whole thing using one a single vendor and there are pluses and minuses associated with that or you could use a best of breed approach. But you get the idea. Okay, and you can go through those. So that's an overview of ERP systems. And I'd like to go on to uh, supply chain for a little bit, if that's all right. Are we good to go? All right, let's do that. Let's go on to supply chain. Oh, look, more orange. It's the orange night. You must be thinking of the Mets. Okay, now, <clears throat> what is supply chain management? So let me take you. Oh, 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 okay. Here are the highest level processes in supply chain management. Plan, source, make, deliver, and this one was added, return. It wasn't there in the original. So plan, it takes a great deal of planning to synchronize supply chain management activities across companies and functions. So the supply chain crosses companies and functions. Uh, you will read about the supply chain in the Walmart case that is for this coming week. It takes a great deal of planning. You'll see. Sourcing, where does a company get its supplies from? How many, how many products does Walmart manufacture? Try again. Right. I think it's none. They sell, right, they sell Jessica, they sell a lot, but they buy those products. They source those products from other suppliers, other companies, right? Even though Walmart has its own brand, it doesn't make 
the over-the-counter medicine that the Walmart, I don't know, used to, is it Equate? I don't know, they have all different kinds now. Okay, so they get their products from other companies. They source them. The company gets the resources from its suppliers. Now, somebody like Volkswagen, uh, does it make its products? And the answer is, does Volkswagen make its products? Yes, it does in plants. That's right. So Volkswagen has to source, find, you know, where is it getting, um, you know, where is it getting the metal from? Where is it getting the engine parts from? Where is it, you know, it gets them from different suppliers, right? So it takes a lot of planning to get all the parts and things that you need or partially manufactured assemblies, you know, so pieces of the engine, and then they put the pieces together. Again, I'm making this up. Um, they make, they transform the activity to turn the resource inputs into outputs. Think of Volkswagen, does Walmart turn the inputs into outputs? Well, their make is a bit different. They're the middle company, right? And they deliver. After the resources are transformed from the inputs into the outputs, they must be moved physically to the next phase of distribution. This is often referred to as logistics. And you'll see that in the Walmart case. It will go through different business functions, different business processes, and it will give a great example of how the supply chain works for a big company like Walmart. What does Walmart never want to have happen? I walk into a store, what don't I want to see? Empty shelves, right? If the shelves are empty, I can't buy it. Walmart makes a lot of money, low profit margin, high turnover. So warehousing and delivering products and getting them on the shelves is a big deal. And so Walmart is very good at managing its supply chain. I'm not a proponent of Walmart. Uh, Please, you know, these cases, I chose these cases because they're good examples of what I want you to learn. Uh, okay, deliver. So return. Um, and then exception processing. Exception processing is a drag, but um, if you buy something and it doesn't fit or it doesn't work, you take it back, right? And so that's an, that's an example of exception processing. You get the idea. How are we doing on time here? 45 minutes. Uh, uh, so these are just, gives you the history, talks about the bullwhip effect. You'll read about the bullwhip whip effect in the Walmart case. And you know the Walmart case is you get that from the Harvard site where all your electronic materials are. So can we have an integrated supply chain without technology? No, we can't. And so wait till you see how Sam Walton went about getting uh, technology into Walmart. Walmart was way ahead of the competition in terms of its use of information technology. And uh, just way ahead. Sam Walton was pretty smart when it came to technology. And you'll, you'll read about it. It's an interesting case study. So we tied strategy, corporate strategy, to the alignment of technology with corporate goals to execute strategy. We talked about ITPM, information technology portfolio management. 
and how that set, the set of technologies, the set of systems that we purchase, uh, the set of hardware that we support, that all fits together in a portfolio. And we want to balance the, the risk and the value to the company, but we must always keep the A word in mind, alignment. Then we go on to, then we move into ERP systems and supply chain management and how now we're going inside the company with ERP systems. We're looking at business processes, how work gets done inside a company and how technology supports the flow of work, the accomplishment of work, uh, updating the database, making sure, you know, it's not garbage, it's not messy. Um, that's ERP systems look within a company, whereas supply chain management looks across companies. That's it in a nutshell. Are you with me? Was that helpful? Good. All right. Uh, I am finished for tonight with this. Great. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Well, I think we meet again in a couple. Thank you guys for showing up and I will stop this recording. This recording will be available on Canvas for two weeks. So if you want to listen to it again. All right. See you guys. Great. Oh, good. Good. I'm happy. I'll stop recording now, but I'll hang around.